Hey there and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to talk you through my setup including the gear I play and even the hardware holding it all together. Andrew Masters says his epic studio tours. Well maybe this can be the start of tiny studio tours or testies. Mm, maybe keep working on that. Before we get started, I feel like every YouTuber is talking about this nowadays, but it seems that over 90% of you who watch aren't even subscribed, which is mental. Because why wouldn't you want to subscribe to my channel for all the sick new content I'm going to be releasing over the next few months? Seriously though, it would really help me out if you could subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and if you like the video, then hit the like button. <laughs> okay, so anyway, on to the video. Now, the first thing to say is that my studio setup lives in my loft. Yes, that's correct. And it's not a big loft. In fact, it's tiny, hence the name of the video. And it's also kind of shaped like a Toblerone. Anyway, so I have to do the best with the space I have, which means most of what I do is in the box. But we'll come to that in a wee while. As soon as you come up the loft, on the left hand side is a handy cupboard which hides a lot of crap including standard paperwork and boxes for gear, but I also hung a handy shoe rack in there and use it as my cable closet. Who knew a shoe rack could be so useful? Next, if we pan round to the left, you'll see we've got these huge storage bins on casters that I'm using for more storage as well. I'll be honest, I want to come up with a better system for keeping all of this organised. I'm kind of thinking some, some kind of like drawer system rather than the big bins because what tends to happen is that stuff just gets chucked in there and then when I need to find something, everything has to come out so that I can find that one tiny little adapter that was over there but now it's here. But I think I put it there but maybe it was over here and oh yeah, it's in the kitchen. I, what are you, anyway. If we keep panning around this way, you'll see more bits and pieces lying around stacked in the corner that sometimes I need, but not all the time. So I just keep it stacked away over there, out the way. Oh, and all the insulating foam and corks, they're for a project that I'm going to be working on uh, with this channel next year. So it's going to be fun. More reasons to stay subscribed. That brings us around to the central command station. Here I've got my standing desk by Koenig & Mayer, the Omega E, which is incredibly versatile and can be spec'd out to almost anything your heart desires. I've got it set up as a typical desk, but what I love is that the tabletop that they very kindly sent out to me, hashtag not sponsored, is the perfect size for the space I have here, because it's not too deep. I bought a normal size desk before but it was just too big for the space and I couldn't really like move around or do anything which meant I never came up and used it. Also the standing part is just so handy. I'm a right fidget so when I get bored or sore back or anything like that it's really nice to be able to change it up. You can check out the video I did on this desk if you want to hear more about it as well. So let's talk about what's actually on the desk. You'll see I've got it set up as a two bunk kind of a system with the bottom bunk holding my control surface, my monitors, interface and my sensor morph and then up in the top bunk we've got my MacBook Pro 16 and my Stream Deck XL. Now at the moment this isn't really doing anything other than looking cool. I used the Stream Deck a lot in lockdown when I had my choirs online and wanted to do a lot of live streaming with them. Um, so now I'm working on trying to get that integrated into my studio rig to make it more useful. In terms of the Mac, this is the late 2019 model, 2.3 gigahertz, 8 core, Intel i9, 32 gigs of RAM and a terabyte built in SD. Oh, and the upgraded graphics for Final Cut Pro as well. So, I mean, apart from the SSD, there wasn't much else I could have done to spec this machine out more. My thinking at the time was, well, this needs to last me at least five to seven plus years. So get the best I can afford and just live with it. Now, on that note, on laptop specs and stuff, I just want to say, don't get waylaid by new models that come out every year. Like it's mental that we've got this culture nowadays that says we have to get the latest and greatest laptop or whatever. Like I know M1 specs are through the roof, but let's be honest, even if you could use the machines to their full potential, because you know, plug-in companies can't even keep up with the updates, if that's your excuse for not making good music or getting work done, then you're kind of missing the point. Yeah, we need to invest in great gear to get pro work done, but we don't need to buy new laptops every single year. 
And I'm sure if my wife actually watches this, she'll be calling me a hypocrite right about now. Anyway, sorry about that wee soapbox moment there. I just had to get it off my chest. <laughs> So, let's have a look at this a bit more in depth. The Qcon Pro X. This is my DAW controller. I flip in love this thing. It's really cool. My only issue with it is the meter bridge isn't very reliable, um, especially if you're dealing with MIDI. However, I love using it for automation and general mixing stuff and general like muting and soloing of tracks and things like that. That is just spot on. Now, although this isn't actually a treated room, I love having the PreSonus Eris E5s to listen to my mixes and just generally check how things are feeling um, in like a more real world situation. So I like that there. The ID4 is my interface and it's, a, it's another case of I don't need the fanciest piece of gear to get the job done. So it does it just fine. It gives me a nice big knob to control my headphone levels and my monitor levels and I can easily plug in a guitar or a bass or a mic to record quickly. Oh, on the point of quick recordings, so I've always got my Rode NT2A connected to the interface on this boom arm from K&M. And honestly, this is the best boom arm I've ever seen. The fact that it comes with Neutrik XLR connectors and a high quality cable that runs through the boom arm with loads of slack on the end as well, by the way, it's an absolute no brainer. Add to that that it holds my Rode mic without even breaking a sweat. In fact, it'll do a I think one and a half kilos of like mic weight. So it's really great, yeah. And also it's just easy to tuck away at the end when I don't need it again. Anyway, uh, finally the morph is the thing that I use most just to smash in some drum sounds when I need to. It also doubles as a handy coffee coaster sometimes as well. So moving down below, you'll see that everything is as neat as it can be thanks to some handy cable management from the K&M people again. Um, and I've also got this Behringer Motor 49 keyboard. We're gonna talk more about uh, keyboards and how that's all rooted in another video though. Check out my huge rack. <laughs> okay, this is actually my live PA and mobile recording rig. And surprise, surprise, there's a video coming soon about that too. So I'm not gonna go too in depth into that at the moment. Moving around to the right, you'll see two more keyboards on top is my Arturia Keylab 88 Mark II in the limited edition black, which is just beautiful. Honestly, I love this keyboard. It's my favorite MIDI keyboard. My only complaint, if anything, would be that I'd love to see some scribble strips below the faders so I didn't have to have a horrible piece of tape with writing on it. Anyway, that's just my issue. Uh, then on the bottom, we've got the Nord Stage 2 EX888. I keep saying I'm gonna sell this. But for some reason I haven't, I just, I can't seem to part with her. Anyway, uh, there are also just both set up on a Stay Piano Model 1202 keyboard stand. Um, it's the really big, strong, durable one, but it's also really light at the same time. And then finally, over on the guitar wall, we've got an acoustic guitar by Freshman, Scotland made, come on, and a bass that isn't actually mine, but still sounds really great through a DI. And I've got a Squire Jazzmaster, which is downstairs on a beanbag somewhere as well. So that covers all the guitar stuff that I need to be able to do. Finally, I've got a couple of lights here in the corner for lighting in the videos. And I've been recording all of this on my trusty Canon 80D. And that about rounds it up for this video. But stay subscribed because I'm going to do a part two and where I'm going to take you through my Logic Pro template, how I route my keyboards in, which plugins I use, how I kind of maximize any creativity I get in such a small space as well. So if you've enjoyed watching this video, please, please, please hit that like button. And if you would want to buy any of this gear, then check the description box below for affiliate links. If you don't know what affiliate links are, they basically help me to help you to earn me a little bit of cash, but it doesn't cost you any extra, so everyone wins. <laughs> anyway, until the next video, I'm Chris, and this is my tiny studio tour. See you in the next one.